Hello everyone, this is Pine Leaf Mules and you're listening to Loto Players News, where we take a look at Lasus and Lotro and here at Loto Players. And this week we have with us Sanswinda! Hello. Calabathian. Hey, had to make sure my mic was actually down. And Krister. <laughs> Hello. Hello everyone. And this week we again don't have a patch this week. So we don't have much news here, but we do have the word that the third quarter producer's letter is expected soon as we are getting into the middle parts of June. So we should be expecting to see a producer's letter within the next couple of weeks so that we know where we are going for our next update. Anyone want to make any guesses on that? Um... Uh, I don't know, but if if they start saying anything about hand baskets or gilded carriages, I'm just saying. It's probably somewhere right around Mordor. <laughs> well, right now we've already been through the worst parts of Mordor, right? No? <laughs> I think, yeah, I think there's probably some worse bits down in the lower levels, right? I mean... This is where we grow food in Mordor. Yeah, that's not the worst place. Think of how many goats are down there. <laughs> <laughs> what, down, down in Nern? Well, in the chasms. You think about who pro- oh, uh, whoever programmed that, uh, the goat uh, trails. You know, those, those goats wander. They smash into walls. Yeah. I'm assuming there's, you know, they lose 30, 40 goats. A week. I they don't probably think all going... have the trample skill and use it all the time on passing <laughs> player characters. That would be awesome. Everybody just fears for their lives at all times and Moria just constantly looking over their shoulders. Well, yeah, it's Moria. <laughs> 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 no, if, if if you go to Moria and you're not constantly looking over your shoulder fearing for your life, then Sauron's, you know, he's he's totally failing. He's um, He was not doing his job. Okay, I guess you meant Mordor there because I'm just trying to think. He's in Moria, you need to be looking yeah, forward Mordor. so you don't yeah. fall into a cliff. <laughs> no, M- Moria, you also have to fear for your life constantly because you will fall. But different different reasons in Moria versus Mordor. Pretty sure there, it's not a uh, coincidence that they both start with the word more, which I think is dark in Elvish. Something like that. Dark world, more door, kind of like Gondor, more door. Ooh, it sounds like a theme park. <laughs> the lands of more. <laughs> I don't. I don't even want to think about what would happen if we had a. a amusement theme park in Mordor. It, <laughs> I'm just having visions of Disney World gone terribly wrong. <laughs> oh yeah, like a Mount Doom coaster or something, you know? And Ooh, maybe a teacup ride around the rim. <laughs> and then you have like the little water ride, except that things actually actively try to eat you. It's not animatronics. They really... <laughs> <laughs> and it's lava. Yeah, and, and the floor is lava. <laughs> Here's a game called The Floor is Lava, except it's really lava. Yeah, so Mordor does not exactly sound like a place where I would want to go for my summer vacation. Also, there is a note there that the registration is now open for Weatherstock 14. This is the annual concert put on by the Lonely Mountain Band, and it is a large production there because they have bands coming from all over, not only just Langerville, which hosts the concert, but also from other servers who make the trip over to Langerville so that they could participate in this. This is one of the largest events that they have in concert-wise in Lotro. And we not only have the main event itself on July 16th, but there's usually a, on the weekends before that, they have concerts being put on by the participants so that we could all 
enjoy a larger program from each of those. We'll see what exactly what they're planning for this year. But July 16th is going to be weather stock number 14 and band registration is now open. If you have a band, no matter what server you're on, you could register in there. Just make sure, of course, if you are from another server to work on getting some characters and legible leveled up enough in order to be able to participate. And this will be, of course, on Amansul. So take that into account. You're not going to be bringing in your level five musicians in there unless you want the security guard to be having a little bit too much fun trying to keep those birds off. Of and that's it for game news for this week. So I hope that we do have a producer's letter next week so that we'll be able to actually have something to report. So let's go into store sales. Calabathian, what's on sale this week? Well, um, Friends of Radagast, I don't know who that would be, but Friends of Radagast, 20% off, select pets and kites, select housing items, and select mounts now through June 16th. And we get a weekly coupon from Pink Floyd this time for combat run speed boost times five with your coupon code of run, run. Run! It's actually three runs in a row. Uh, also now uh, through June 16th. And, and that's all we got, man. That's yeah. all we got, yes. Let's then head into our week in gaming. Calabathian, what were you up to? <sighs> okay. But um, first of all, Lotro, um, mostly this week uh, was missions and catch up with Cassowary uh, around Gundabad. Um, cause since, uh, on my Tuesday night game group, uh, I kind of started a little bit later than they did. I've got some stuff to do and we were only really following the main, um, the main quests. And so there's, there's a bunch of side quests and such that, um, I'm going through and picking up stuff, um, on because I, I must get stronger, um, cue the training montage and getting strong now. Um, because, you know, there's raiding to do. But uh, speaking of raiding, there was no raid this week due to a lack of pugs. That was the first time I'd ever heard that. I, it was explained to me. <laughs> but um, they they were just kind of like throwing it. Yeah, we're going to have to pug. And, we, you know, and I'm just like, what? Like, invite dogs? Is this what we do? <laughs> Um, <laughs> can they even can they even see i mean they're little <laughs> um, oh pickup groups yes yeah pickup groups but um we didn't get to do our raid so instead we did a different tier two which was the houses of rest <laughs> lol no um <laughs> individuals mentioned their captain was crap except for Puglock after I mentioned being unable to get through it without dying. <laughs> oh, but my crap captain can get through it. Oh, um, so you're saying I'm crap. Okay. I thought um, he was trying to say it very nicely though. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm just like, bleh, 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 bleh. fine. I won't DPS your raid. <laughs> 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 Me and my shovel are going home. <laughs> and uh, Craft the World this week, I finally got to try the Heart of Evil pack expansion for the first time. Uh, and elves are the bad guys in it. It's like uh, it was the elves all along. Um, and mana use is like really expensive when you get over to their side of the game. Ugh, can I just say? Uh, I I did not want to spend 37 mana just to open a portal here um, or do anything um, because my dwarves are, of course, complete idiots uh, and they, they uh, yeah. Um, Were they cheap at least if they're... <laughs> No. <laughs> Dwarves aren't cheap. No. Um no. 
Uh, matter of fact, I had one of the heroes uh, decide, he kept wandering off toward these elves and then standing there waiting for them to actually reappear on my side. And, and then he wanted to go fight him. And I'm like, dude, fine. I'm not going to bail you. Finally, he died because of that. And I'm like, that serves you right. Because <laughs> you're an idiot. But um, yeah, uh, that was kind of my week. Um, how about you, Krister? Well, like you said, we uh, didn't muster enough for a raid last night, so we decided to do House of Rest. Um, we did have uh, 137 with us, and we were trying to T2, so uh, I think we had a little bit of difficulty uh, as a result. Because, <laughs> yeah, you were right. It wasn't the House of Rest. Uh, there was no rest to be had. There's except no for rest the for the wicked. Um, <laughs> I guess we're the evil guys. But we got to the final boss before we called it, so... We did, and people did. A few people did get upgrades as well, so that was mission accomplished. I want to um, know, actually, with that houses of rest tier two thing, what is with the devs want and dead things that keep coming back? Well, you know, there are a lot of zombie movies. You know, a lot of zombie themes. I'm, 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 I'm. I'm I'm trying not to to you know spoil it for anyone who hasn't actually attempted it for for this boss. But I'm like, this is a combination of a past boss that has been undead before, and um, the the hidden horde boss. And I'm like, um, well, it could be worse. They could bring you, out a zombified version of Shelob next time. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you say it could be worse, you shut your ideas. mouth, Pine Leaf. Fine. <laughs> Don't you dare say that in my presence. That's that's horrible. That is not Pine Leaf friendly. <laughs> but uh, Sorry, Chris, out, go ahead. oh no worries. Uh, outside outside the uh, raid, I uh, did find an upgrade opportunity for Christopher, so I did that as well. So he got a little bit better la last night. So it wasn't a bad night at all. Um, and then ESO, uh, they had the High Isles release, and that has been a lot of fun, frankly, so far. I, I'm, uh, I think I'm still just kind of in the beginning of the storyline uh, in the Isle, but I'm really enjoying it. And I've unlocked the two new companions, and really, really like, I think I finally found the permanent com companion for my uh, exploding orc, uh, which is an exploding Khajiit, so... <laughs> uh, that's been fun, and then the, I tried to Templar out, and I liked it enough that I started leveling it up uh, as well, and that's been a lot of fun. And then Final Fantasy, I uh, did a few uh, duty clusters with uh, a lot of people from Ploy uh, are playing Final Fantasy now, um, and both my characters, my main characters, leveled, uh, which hasn't happened in three years. <laughs> so that was it's been unprecedented this week. Um, and then uh, our pen and paper D and D group is taking a break from our D and D campaign and doing a sci fi adventure. And so I, I, I'm pretty sure I shared this with Sands, and maybe I blabbed to you guys at some point or another. But uh, the uh, requirement for our characters was to think outside the box, and it was going to be like a Star Wars like universe where there's countless species, and, uh, a vibrant intergalactic society. So I'm playing a three inch tall. Uh, kind of ca cross between a caterpillar and a water bear, uh, who's uh, a famous singer on his home world, and uh, his songs are played in the local intergalactic volume. So he's become filthy rich, and he was so rich he became the ruler of his planet. And then uh, he was like this freewheeling hippie, and then like a bunch of conservative people came in, and then there was a giant war, and he didn't want to see his people killed, so he fled, but he took his music with him. And so now he's like uh, in in hiding. Uh, he has uh, he's worth uh, billions and billions of credits, but he can't access them because the moment he touches the money, uh, there will be a lot of uh, spaceships firing at the at the derelict that he's currently on. <laughs> so I feel like I fulfilled the requirement of thinking outside the box on my character. <laughs> that sounds oddly familiar. I think you might have mentioned it at some point. I did. I did. Now now the, I've defined him a little bit. So he's got a specialized biome but he didn't want it to be obvious when he was traveling because he's only three inches tall. So it's disguised as a food vending machine. So he lives inside a vending machine that actually works uh, and disperses food. So that's, that might be one of his negotiating things with people. 
I'll feed you. Just take me on your ship. <laughs> so that's been a lot of fun uh, engaging in that creative process. And uh, uh, had a good, had a pretty active week. So, Sands, how about you? Well, <laughs> for Lutro, um, I joined the field trip briefly to chat when I got home from work yesterday. And didn't actually end up doing very much in Lotro because our Tuesday night group uh, ended up in ESO instead so that we didn't get further ahead in um, Yondershire. So um, I killed some world bosses and unlocked the new companion Ember in ESO this week, which was pretty fun. And I got a dragon mount in Final Fantasy XIV, which Ooh, is rats. awesome. And it flies in all the places where I can fly, which is also awesome. So, that was pretty fun. How was your week, Pine Leaf? All right, we'll start with Lotro, where my Landrifle Warden joined in on Friday night fight, where we ran some small fellowship instances. We ran Pugalach, we ran Thurstroke, and we ran Woe of the Willow. And then in DDO, my tabaxi headed on into the Feywild, so I did the first few quests over there. And of course, in ESO, I was also playing the new content for High Isle. And there I finished up on the main storyline in there, and a good percentage of the side quests in there also. So I have did a huge amount of questing over the course of the week. And I also gathered all the pieces to the Druidic Provisioning Station. So this means I now have a provisioning station in my home that was all collected through the antiquity. So that is the first crafting station that I've had in one of my houses, is this provisioning station. And I also learned how to play Tales of Tribute. So I was traveling all over Tamriel playing Tales of Tribute with various NPCs and having some fun with that. And I, I don't know if you've been following along what Tales of Tribute is. Isn't that the, uh, isn't that that uh, card, card game? Yeah, yeah yes, the card game. Yeah. All right. And that's it for my week in gaming. We currently have 14 supporters on Patreon. If you'd like to join the Celestrious Raider players and help support Lotro players, you go to the nation's Patreon to support the Players Alliance on Patreon. Your money would be used for podcast hosting, website hosting, and to pay for our live shows. We have no emails this week. If you feel like since one, you can send it to podcast at loachplayers.com. You also follow us on Twitter. The Players Alliance at Players Alliance, Loach of Players at Loach of Players, Arendis at Arendis, Pineley Fit, Pineley Fit, Needles, Sends Wenda at Sends Wenda, Terry Edwin at Terry Edwin, Guerendis at Guerendis, Calabathian at Calabathian, and Krister at Entropy Engine 1. The Players Alliance has two shows. On Saturdays at 8.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, we have Loach Players News. And on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, we have DDO Players News, or more likely just when Drac is available. You can choose for our shows at loachplayers.com slash live. And that is it for today. And this is Polyphonic Needles reminding you to skirmish responsibly.